What's going on investors? It's AK from Fallible and today we are going to talk about one of the greatest investors to ever do it. My guy, Michael Marcus. Look at that smile. Beautiful. In this video, we are going to learn some of the best lessons from Mr. Marcus. So Michael Marcus is the guy who turned $30,000 into 80 million over a 20 year period. And he's one of the more popular guys who was profiled in Jack Schwager's original classic Market Wizard. And hopefully you guys have read this book. If you haven't, definitely go get it. And Michael Marcus comes from that epic trading class all from commodities corp so that lineage came from amos hostetter who is the founder of commodities corp and if you don't know what commodities corp is it is that trading chop from back in the day that produced so many legendary traders most of which were profiled in market wizards these are the super smart guys that made millions and even billions in the market but anyway first you had amos who started commodities corp and he was the mentor to ed sakota which is another guy i mean we'll do a video on him too he's awesome he's probably my favorite market wizard just because he's so damn weird but then ed sakota is the one who trained michael marcus who trained another market wizard bruce covener so you've just got this legendary lineage and you might actually know of michael marcus through his son aubrey marcus who is a pretty big influencer he's on that whole tim ferris type thing with like bringing your body to the next level and all those biohacks and he actually started that company called on it which you probably heard of from joe rogan because he talks about it in every podcast well he used to anyway and that's because he was an investor in on it with aubrey so you might have heard about that supplement alpha brain but they're a big big company aubrey has done well for himself and aubrey talks about a bunch of stuff like spirituality and relationships and actually aubrey with this lady right here i think her name is uh whitney these two are in an open relationship which means they're like engaged and together but then they have lovers on the side and i'm on aubrey marcus's email list because i was interested in him because he's you know michael marcus's son so every week in this email list he emails out a message about how difficult it is being in an open relationship he'll be like oh the last few days i've been rolling on the floor dry heaving just at the thought of my lover being with a different lover but open relationships are important and i'll get through this and every week he talks about this and how difficult it is and how much pain he's in and i don't know why i keep reading i guess it's entertaining but i'm like dude just maybe an open relationship is not for you maybe it's not the way to go but he keeps going and i keep reading so but okay back to his dad michael marcus who actually he talks about a lot too because they had some real problems which if you ever wished the market wizard was your dad so he could teach you maybe you shouldn't be wishing that that, that was another thing i was interested in when i was looking up aubrey marcus's stuff i can't help it i just want to know everything about the market wizards that i can but okay back to michael marcus so michael marcus on having the proper mindset i am very open-minded i'm willing to take in information that is difficult to accept emotionally but which i still recognize to be true huh it sounds like marcus might be fallible yes yes he is i got this idea from somewhere right but all the best traders have strong opinions opinions weekly held. So they'll dive into something, you know, study it for days, months, and have a ton of conviction in it and really believe it. But if new information comes out that goes against what they originally thought, then they're fine just dropping that thesis. And that's what Marcus means here when he's talking about difficult to accept emotionally. Because with most traders and investors, when you put that much effort into researching something and understanding it, with the intention of putting a trade behind it, no matter what new information comes out, you don't want to switch away from that. Because that means all that work you did is worthless. It's that sunk cost fallacy, which is one of the psychological biases that you should avoid in trading that I actually went over in this playlist right here. Definitely go check that out. But we all know how that is. I mean, you put so much work into something and have to abandon it. It sucks. But if you're fallible and you're like Michael Marcus here, then you're going to do it because the point is to make money, not to be right on some thesis. I would sometimes think that maybe I ought to stop trading because it was very painful to keep losing. In the filler on the roof, there is a scene where the lead looks up and talks to God. I would look up and say, am I really that stupid? And I see to hear a clear answer saying no you are not stupid you just have to keep at it so i did and this quote i really like because it shows you even the market wizard started out with the same stuff that we feel because i'm sure while you've been trading like i felt this too loss after loss you start thinking damn i must be an idiot this isn't working i might be just too stupid for this and when you go through the market wizards book you'll see that most of those guys felt the same way because even the greats the legends in those books they kind of start at the same level as everybody else feeling the same things but the point is is you keep going you keep learning and you keep evolving and it's just inspiring to see that someone as great as michael marcus was in the same situation so keep going guys you got it go for it 
Trading has two types of capital that must be managed, financial capital and mental capital. In this case, losing a lot or being unsure of your system drains you of your mental capital. You don't wanna do that. Losing either your financial or mental capital will knock you out of the business. Now, this was a huge thing for me, which is a big reason why I switched to system trading instead of discretionary. And Michael Marcus is a discretionary trader, but it still applies. Because when I was discretionary, I would sit there just wondering if my trade is gonna work out. Cause I didn't really have any stats to back up what I was doing. I didn't have a very good plan. I just didn't know what was gonna happen. So I sit there like, is this gonna work? Is this not gonna work? Earnings are this, the price action looks like this and just keep churning it over and over in my head and you tire yourself out. And the more you think about it and stress over it, the more your emotions go into play. And then before you know it, you're making a terrible trade. But when I switched to my system, which is the NASDAQ All-Stars, it's a momentum system, which I actually explained in another video, you can see that right here. But when I switched to that system, it was back tested. So I had all the stats, the win rate, how many losses I'm usually gonna have exactly what type of trade I should be taking because the system tells me all of that is laid out so it's much easier to just focus on execution and now putting on a trade from my system takes five minutes and I barely have to even think about the market I just check it once in a while because it's all systematic my mental capital is secure which is super important for me and important for you too because we got other stuff we're doing right I got to run businesses a lot of people got to go to work even if you are a full-time trader you don't want to be wasting mental capital where you don't have to that's why a system is so important here's Michael Marcus on risk management. Perhaps the most important rule is to hold on to your winners and cut your losers. Both are equally important. If you don't stay with your winners, you're not going to be able to pay for the losers. Cut your losses and let your winners run. That's such a classic phrase. And I think everyone probably picked that up from these Market Wizard books. But it is a very important rule because it gets into the idea of asymmetric betting, which I actually talked about in a recent Billions video, which I'll link to here. You can check that out. But you need to have your winners run and make a bunch of money so that they could cover all the losers you're going to have. Because the way the market works, is you're only gonna have a few winners and then a bunch of losers. So with the losers, you gotta cut them short, right? So they don't turn into huge losses. But with the winners, you gotta let them go so they turn into huge wins. So one huge win should cover all those small losses and more. And I know lots of traders, including myself back in the day, when you see a little bit of profit on your position, you wanna cut it off right away. You wanna take your money and run. But if you want those big market wizard type gains, you gotta let it run. You gotta stick with your winners. And that's basically what I do when I'm trading momentum myself. And this last last quote right here that we're going to talk about is all about Marcus's style, which is discretionary. The best trades are the ones in which you have all three things going for you. Fundamentals, technicals, and market tone. And market tone, if you've seen my other videos, is what I call sentiment. First, the fundamentals need to suggest that there is an imbalance of supply and demand, which could result in a major move. Second, the chart must show that the market is moving in the direction that the fundamentals suggest. Third, when news comes out, the market should act in a way that reflects the right psychological tone. So you need all those three things working together. Together. Fundamentals, like if you're studying a company, you realize it's super undervalued. So that should result in a major move. Next, you got to see that people are actually realizing that with you. So you want to see some buying pressure and prices rising a little bit because you want to catch it when it's moving. If you found a value that no one else knows about in the market, then it doesn't really matter, right? Because no buyers are going to come in and push the price up. And third, you want to see people react the right way to stuff. So say when that value company comes out with earnings that are really good, you should see the price spike. If you don't, then that means the sentiment towards this company is still still too bad and you don't want to get in it because you'll just have dead money. And these three things are what we call the Marcus trifecta. And it's exactly what we use in our discretionary strategy over at macro ops. Like I said, I'm systematic now, but back when I was discretionary, I tried to do the same thing. Obviously didn't do it too well. It was okay. But Alex and macro ops who actually wrote this article, you know, this is a macro ops article. He's very good at that discretionary approach where you definitely need those three things. Now, Michael Marcus is not the only market wizard. There are more that I'm going to go over the less lessons from them are so important. So if you want to see those videos, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you get an email notification when those videos come out. We publish videos every single day. So if you love markets and business, make sure you subscribe. I will see you in the next video. Stay fallible out there. Bye.